Welcome back to the channel everybody, Brian from Apex Detail here. We're looking at the second polisher from Bauer. This is available at Harbor Freight. And I think it's very important to find and review and showcase polishers that you can go out to a store and purchase. Uh, you know, if you do this for a living and you have one break down, it is nice to have a shop that's local that you can go and pick up a polisher to fill in until you get yours back. I did review uh, another polisher from Bauer, an entry level, uh, that is an 8mm throw. And that one was honestly terrible and unless you're just purchasing it to correct your car or polish your car just once, uh, absolutely fine. But uh, to use on a regular basis, uh, day after day, it would just vibrate your hands off so I couldn't recommend. I'm really looking forward um, to a totally different review of this, we'll see how it goes. But this is a 20 millimeter throw. This is a more powerful, powerful unit. A lot more thought has been put behind putting this polisher together. In the kit comes the polisher with the six inch backing plate. You have your instruction manual. They actually give you a six inch pad. Uh, it doesn't say if this is just a polish pad or intermediate, but in the store, Harbor Freight, they have four uh, polish pads. Cut, um, light cut, heavy polish, finishing pad and you can purchase those they have a beveled edge this is just a standard I'm not even know I'm not even sure if this is one of their pads but uh, you don't get a an extra set of carbon brushes however you do get the allen key for the backing plate and that is uh, the holder is part of the unit here down on the shroud so with that said let's move on to the closer look portion of the review Okay, moving on to the closer look segment of the video, the Bauer 20 millimeter polisher. That means the throw uh, of the backing plate. The offset is 20 millimeter, 120 volts, 7.5 amps, no load speed at 2000 to 4600 RPM. It has a 12 foot 3 inch cord. We're going to get to more dimensions as the, the uh, video moves on here, but it does have an ergonomic sleek look to it. It's, it's a modern design. You have the uh, rubber grip platypus handle up front here. You have the rubber grip down near the trigger. It is a six speed variable. We'll get to tactile feedback in just uh, a few short seconds here. But again, we have the Allen key for the backing plate, uh, part of the shroud down there. You have a high performance, constant power, 7.5 amp motor. It has soft uh, start. That'll give you a nice, smooth startup. And it all actually helps with uh, some long gear life. The electronic controller in the interiors uh, provides constant speed control and will automatically apply power to the unit when the uh, polisher is under load and needs a little bit more power. It also has an all metal gear construction and that should, in theory, make the unit last a little bit longer if it's taken care of. It also has the uh, little ports here to replace the carbon brushes. Here is the Allen key then for the backing plate. Just slide it over, pull it out, and you can swap out, and I always go to a five inch backing plate. Um, a five inch backing plate compared to a six inch will give you more power. More energy from the polisher gets transferred down through the shroud to the backing plate and then onto the panel itself causing more friction and you have a little bit more power to correct. When it comes to the speed dial, the one thing I don't like, no tactile feedback at all. And if you can hear that, there's no clicking. So if, if you're not looking, you don't know how far you're going when it comes to speed. You just, you kind of have to um, gear it towards the sound of uh, the little motor here. Trigger feels okay. Handle feels good, nice and grippy, nice and soft. It feels good to grip it up here as well. Dimensions on the unit. 17 and a half inches long. Sixteen point five mils wide, and from the top of the polisher down to the bottom of the shroud, when it comes to clearance, you're looking at fifty five point three mils. Overall weight of the unit, just a little under five and a half pounds. And just to show you that a five inch backing plate will work 
absolutely fine on this machine. Let's swap out and take off the six inch backing plate. You can see the cooling vents they have on this backing plate. Snug it up a bit, and there you go. And as you can see, plenty of space between the shroud and the backing plate. No need for an adapter or a washer mod. With the counterbalance removed, once again, we get a good look at the counterweight here, which is one piece. And right here is the sealed bearing as well. And we're going to get to the look inside segment next where we remove this and you have the four screws to remove the shroud. We'll get the uh, platypus handle off here, get to the rotor, the rest of the bearings, take a look at the internals. We'll get down to the business end of the polisher here, take a look at the wiring management and also the internals. That'll bring us to the look inside segment of the video. That's where I'll tear down the unit, give you a close look at the internals without you having to take your own unit apart, avoiding the warranty. We're gonna start with, since we already had the backing plate removed, let's get this platypus head pulled away from the unit. First, we need to get these plastic caps from either side. That's where a handle would go. No handle came with the unit but any standard handle would work in these threaded areas here. So if for some reason you thought you needed one, I pulled this off of a flex rotary. Threads are the same. So you could thread that in there and you have yourself a handle you could put on. Uh, they have the LED lights for polishers, any type of attachment like that. With the caps removed, just get a regular screwdriver in there twist it and like that the handle comes off all right i'm going to try and get you a good angle here um, so we can see what type of plastic the casing is made of and here if you can see that we have the pa6 gf30 so what that is is uh, 30 percent glass fiber reinforced polyamide that is a high impact plastic and it's it's mostly used uh, and suitable on parts which are exposed to high static loads and it holds up over long periods of time. Okay, so with this removed and out of the way, that exposes the lock pin here where you push that down and you can then spin off the counterweight and that will expose four more screws to remove the shroud. These are Phillips head screws compared to T15s, T25s that you normally see in the Asian or Japanese made units. And with those screws removed, we just simply gently lift that up. And since the screws are removed, this section here with the gears, just gently give it a wiggle and a twist, and out comes the spindle gear. Right there is the pinion gear. I always change out the grease from the factory crap to um, lithium wolf's head red. You know, you can use any high temp gear grease and uh, repack it and it's going to be better than the factory crap that they give you. Okay, with that done, before we go any further, we have four more screws to get to the rotor and the motor of the unit, but we can't pull that out unless we have the carbon brushes removed. The carbon brushes are exposed by removing these plastic caps right here. There's that. And out it comes. That's all there is to it. Do that on the other side. Put them in your tray here so you don't lose any parts or screws. Okay, so this is the end down here. 
that will have most of the controls and the control board, little PCB. Okay, we have four Phillips head screws to get inside the handle to the controls. Okay, and we're gently gonna wiggle this casing And again, inside the handle, you see the PA6 GF30, 30% glass fibers. Inside the unit, 8 amp switch, wiring nice and clean, nothing exposed. You have the PCB board. I'd like to see that protected with some type of coating or resin. I don't see that. That helps with moisture and dust. And the wiring leads out to a, see if I can get this to focus. That's going to be quite hard. All right there, you can see the SJ Junior Service. This is the thermal set rubber. This isn't the hard plastic. That's one plus. Nice and soft, drapes over your shoulder easily, bends has some give to it. Okay, so let's get these four screws up here. Again, Phillips head, and we'll pull the rotor from the casing. And with those four screws removed, plus the carbon brushes, you never want to go pulling on this without removing the carbon brushes. Give it a little bit of help. And there you go. So we have the directional plastic fan here, keeping the unit cool internally. You have the field windings, which is dipped in a resin. The one thing I don't see here, and just like the other tool, and I pointed that out before, no epoxy at the end here to keep these all stable as the vibrations from the unit if it causes any one of these to vibrate loose, it will cause a short. So that's a little bit disappointing here. The laminations look good. Uh, the commutator. And we have the sealed bearings. So all in all, an average build, maybe a little bit below average on the interior here. We have the field windings on the inside here. They are all dipped in a resin, so that's good. Speaking of the bearings, not sure if you can see that SYBS, and that stands for a sealed bearing. Okay, let's get this thing back together. I'll show you uh, how it runs. I'll let you listen to it. Uh, is it noisy? Is it quiet? How is the vibration compared to the original Bauer that we uh, tore apart and we showcased before, which was absolutely terrible? Let's hope there's an improvement. Let's see what kind of work this can get done on a panel. Let's get this back together. Okay, with everything back together again, let's uh, power it up, turn it on. I'll run through the gears and uh, let you listen to it. Again, it has a soft start. Okay, so what I did, I put the original six inch backing plate that came with the unit and put it on because sometimes if you go from a six inch to a five inch, it adds to a little bit of the vibration as the balance was made for a six inch. So we'll uh, test and demonstrate with the six inch backing plate. All right, we're just going to do a small section of the trunk back here with the pad that came with, the backing plate, everything uh, that was shipped with the unit, and we'll just use a little bit of 3D1. First of all, this pad blows, so 
Let me get one of my own pads on here and we'll continue with the test. All right, let's get a real pad on here. Your fiber 50-50 pad. All right, uh, one thing I'm noticing when you have the trigger fully depressed, you need to push in the lock button pretty far. You can't just tap it in with your thumb like some of the other units. It has to go in all the way for it to lock. Okay, so on a tilt, you see it doesn't easily stall. Uh, one good sign, it has a lot less vibration than the original Bauer that we showcased here on the channel. Um, they, I do see this advertised as something to compare to the Roops 21, and even though you guys know I'm not a Roops fan at all, uh, that comparison cannot be made. Uh, I can recommend for maybe an enthusiast or somebody who's just going to correct their car maybe once, and maybe a neighbor's car uh, a second time down the, the road, but I couldn't use this on a daily basis. The vibration on my Max Shine... Um, and even the Grio, Grios Garage Boss 21 is a lot less, uh, and it's a lot it's a lot easier on your hands than this unit here. But this is a marked improvement over the original version. Some of the internal components uh, can be beefed up a bit. Put some epoxy uh, right before the commutator to make sure those uh, field windings stay in place, and you'd be in good shape. That is just about going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. If you have any questions on unit, don't hesitate. But before we end the video, for those of you that stuck in there with me all the way through the video to the end, I really want to help, and I really enjoy helping you guys that are just getting into this. Um, I don't care if you're just an enthusiast and you just want to start to take care of your own car, or you're somebody that has the ambition to do this as a career or part-time. I want to help out. So I have a brand new Bauer 20 millimeter throw and I'm going to throw in uh, a compound a heavy correct two bottles of a heavy correcting compound a correcting polish a regular polish and then a pol a uh, paint sealant along with a real pad that would work with this polisher so you have everything you need just need to pick up a couple microfiber towels and maybe add a polish or a finishing pad to it but it's pretty much everything you need to start to turn around some awful paint jobs i'm going to give this away free and i'm also going to pick up and take care of shipping to the first person that really needs it, if you don't need it and you have a polisher, just, guys, let it pass and let somebody who really needs a polisher and some correcting fluids get it. But the first person down in the comments section that says, I'm just starting out and I love Apex Detail, will get this on me. I'll take care of shipping. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And if you are enjoying the channel and its content, please be sure to like, subscribe, share the content, Hit that notification bell, that'll let you know when we have new videos.